It's space weather! Checking out the sun on 171 angstroms. The earth-facing quiet effect strikes again. Sunspot 2731 evaporates. Solar activity super weak. KP has been at zero or one for the past three days. Last I checked it was zero. And cosmic rays have increased. Here's your 304 angstroms view. And here's your magnetic lines. No connection to the coronal hole, magnetically speaking. And we're awaiting a coronal hole wind stream. Let's look at the spaceweathernews.com data. had a small B-class X-ray flare yesterday before that sunspot evaporated. Now, there may be a phi angle signal developing here, so we'll keep an eye on that. A slight uptick in the solar wind density after incredibly low levels yesterday. Solar wind speed is all the way down to like 300 kilometers per second. Super slow, super weak. Magnetometer is even weaker than it was the past couple days. We're seeing lower highs and higher lows. KP index back to zero. Cosmic ray human health alert in effect. And we're going to get a dip in the electron flux. When the solar wind increases, the electron flux is going to dip, as it typically does from coronal hole wind streams. And the F2 layer is extremely discharged. Look at that, only 8 megahertz. I mean, you've got this discharge region all in here. Super weak. If the solar wind speed increases, that'll charge up pretty quickly. There's your auroral forecast. Let's look at earthquakes over the past, say, seven hours. We're going to avoid going to the U.S. downgrade service site and use quakes.globalincidentmap.com. Look at the last nine hours here. New Zealand got a 4.9 magnitude. Chile got a 4.6. Philippines got a 4.6. 5.2 in Vanuatu, 5.4 in China. So no, no super powerful earthquakes. I think that's the largest one, actually. No, that 5.4 in China was the largest one. Moving on. Let's look at solarham.net. You can see... Sunspot 2731 is no longer a sunspot. No umbra. There is also a small plage south of the solar equator. And it's looking like it's reverse polarity. We won't get into the weeds on that, but for those of you who know what that means, reverse polarity plage, there it is. You can see the, the yellow... Uh, you know, yellow charge ahead of the green charge there. Not a super big deal. And let's look at the U.S. Doppler radar here. You can see the East Coast is getting inundated. The entire state of Pennsylvania and starting to get some wintry mix in the north-central regions. Let's see what's going on in the water vapor. Got 
and here's your NASA GOES interactive weather satellite, the water vapor map. You can see an extremely powerful upper level low around West Virginia. It's breaking up this dry air and it's causing this moisture to just stagnate. It's a function of the jet stream. Let's look at a zoomed in view of that. And there's your close up of that low. And a very interesting conversion zone going on here. Let that play through a few times. And let's look at the upper level 250 millibar winds on tropical tidbits. We'll advance this so that you can see what's, go what's going on in the upper level that's got us here. That pinch in the jet stream is what's causing all that compression. And that's going to stay, that low is going to stay there until it finally pushes off to the east. This is the GFS forecast. There's the next few hours. And let's look at some cosmic ray monitors. A big spike in the Moscow. And the Moscow neutron monitor, big spike came in. We're getting great correlation with low KP indices and cosmic ray flux. Here we are at the uh, Athens cosmic ray monitor. A decent spike on that one also. Mexico City, same deal, a spike right there. None of these monitors still as high as uh, December 2nd, though. And let's look at your planetary locations. For those of you who are interested, Venus should be visible this morning. If you get up before sunrise or before it's fully light out, there should be a very bright Venus in the sky. And there's your planetary locations. And let's take a quick look at inthesky.org. See your locations of your constellations. Since we talked about cosmic rays, let's animate the map and see what time Cygnus rises. Here comes Cygnus. And there's Deneb. Over the eastern U.S., it looks like it rises at about 5.15. Where will you be when Cygnus rises? Thanks for tuning in, everybody let things close out at the 171 angstroms view remember on your way driving don't drive and if you drive don't drive seriously don't drive if you drink don't drive if you drive don't drink and if you if you drive don't drive find yourself a parking lot put your vehicle in there and it's much more enjoyable